First of all, if you're starting a business and you take out a loan, you're a moron. In order to grow as a business person or as an individual, you need to understand where you came from, who you are, where you're going, and why all things happen. And the reason that's the reason I like business is because the problem in sports, when the game's over, it's over, the clock runs out. Most of the ideas were terrible, but I gave out a dollar for the good ideas and a dollar for the bad ideas. And by doing that, the message was just keep the ideas coming. How do you get money to do what you love? You don't. What you do is you position yourself to succeed. So for example, if you're doing something else and you want to do this thing you love, you do it after hours, right? I mean, you start building your equity and your brand and whatever you're trying to accomplish. If you want bling bling, if you want to buy the jets, if you want to do sh work. That's how you get it. And uh, I remember pushing the bank manager out of my house, telling him he wasn't welcome. Dangerous thing to do to your bank manager. This is Hacking Entrepreneurs with Angel Clark. Welcome to a brand new segment of the Angel Clark Show. We are sitting here today with Jeff Berwick. Jeff is a serial entrepreneur. He started Canada's largest financial website, Stockhouse.com. He's been to over 100 countries, lived around the world. He is the chief editor at the dollarvigilante.com, host of Anarchast, and he joins us today to talk about business. Jeff, I want to thank you, first off, for joining us this afternoon. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're, we're going to dive right into this because we're doing business-specific questions here. So uh, what was your first business idea, and what did you do with it? No, that's a good question. I, I think know, I, right? I probably started when I was five or six years old. I realized that I, if I wanted to do things in life, I needed some money. So I was always hustling, always trying to find ways to make money. I probably started off by just doing regular jobs just to work up some capital. I was a hockey referee up in Canada, uh, working at six in the morning for three or four dollars, uh, being a referee. And before that, I was probably delivering newspapers back when they used to do that. Uh, and so I was always just working up capital. Uh, trying to think of my first business that I started that was actually a real business where I wasn't really just working for anyone. I think that would probably be when I started a music studio in my house. So yeah. I, I had been a rapper and um, I realized I wasn't a very good rapper, and uh, so I decided to stop rapping, but I had all this music equipment, and I had gotten quite good with all the equipment, and I had a little studio in my apartment in Vancouver, Canada, and I uh, started just to talk to people and put little ads in newspapers. That's how you used to have to do things back in the uh, early 90s, and uh, I, I had voiceover people come over. I had bands come over to record in my apartment. Uh, one of the voiceover people actually turned out to be one of the most famous voiceover people now. He wasn't at the time. He was just doing commercials and stuff. He's now pretty much in any video game or movie you've ever seen. He's actually the voice over my podcast, Anarchast, when he says, this is Anarchast, uh, very uh, well known now. So I did that for a little while while I was working at a bank. So uh, again, I was trying to make money all day and then I'd go home and try to make money on my own at a, not a regular job. Uh, and then uh, after that, the internet had started. So it was 1993 and I knew that the internet was going to be something very important and I was into stocks. So I started stockhouse.com, which was just out of my house again. I was still working at the bank when I started it and it began to grow. And so I quit my job at the bank to do it. And actually they were going to just uh, make me the bank manager at 23 years old. And I would have been the youngest at that particular bank at the time. And they were all excited and they said, hey, we're going to promote you to bank manager you must be so proud and I said you know what I think I'm gonna quit and I think that was the best decision I ever made in my life and and they said why and I said I'm gonna do something on the internet and they said what's the internet and I said well it's a bunch of computers they're all connected and they said you're crazy and uh, that was the last time I really ever worked for anyone now when you started stockhouse.com how did the idea come to you was it like a did you just kind of have a have a epiphany or was it or was it something that kind of built up for a while well every business i think i've ever started uh, almost all of them at least has come out of a need that i saw that i wanted in the market oh. 
So I was sitting there in 1994, and I was really into stocks, and there was not even stock quotes on the internet. And so I said, well, there has to be stock quotes on the internet. So I started in Canada. I just went to the stock exchanges, and I said, how do we get stock quotes on the internet? And they were like, what's the internet? <laughs> and, and go through the whole process. <laughs> it was very painful. Actually, by 1999, I went, I was in Australia trying to get the Australian Stock Exchange to put their quotes on the internet. And uh, they actually had quotes on the internet, but they were one week old quotes. Oh, no. And I said, uh, that's crazy. You need like real time quotes or at least, you know, 15 minute delayed quotes. And they said, no, that's it's we can never do that. And I convinced them to do it. Uh, so uh, with that business, as I was pointing out, it was something uh, where I just recognized something that I wanted personally, and it wasn't being done by the market. So I just found out a way to do it. How how did you do it? I mean, did you did you come up with a, a type of software to do it, or did you have a person manually enter stock? Uh, no, prices? it wasn't manual, uh, luckily. But uh, I wasn't a computer programmer, so I put a little ad on a, what at the time was before the internet there was no monster.com or anything for finding people Gasp. <laughs> and so i went on a bulletin board system which is what they had before the internet and it was something called the midi bbs it was about music because i was into music at the time too and i put on there i said hey i'm looking for someone who knows how to program and i hit enter and i hung up the phone because that's how you used to get on these things uh, you did, it was just one person's house had one of these bulletin boards and only one person could get on it at the time and you'd have to call their house to get on it so I hit enter looking for a person who could program. And as soon as I, I hit enter and hung up, my phone rang. And this, uh, this kid goes, I want the job. <laughs> and I said, who are you? And he goes, oh, uh, I run that uh, bulletin board system. That's mine. And I said, oh, I love that bulletin board system. He's like, yeah, I've been doing it for a while. And I said, how old are you? And he's like, 15. <laughs> and I said, and he was a Chinese kid. He could barely even speak English. And I said, well, come over to my house and we'll talk about it. And uh, he came over and I, I talked him into working for me to create this. I said, I want to get stock quotes on the Internet. And he was like, no problem. <laughs> and he, he did it in like a day. And, uh, and then we just went to the stock exchange and, and figured out how to get their information onto the site. Huh. Now, uh, I, I assume because you realized that this was something that you needed that that you wanted to see and you had to create it yourself uh, that that it kind of worked for you was there ever something that you did where you didn't see a need first you just thought oh you know i don't know that anyone's doing this i don't necessarily need it but it might be interesting to try it no, I've never done that. <laughs> um, I always uh, just sort of reckon that there's so many needs in the market. That's what I've realized. And when people say they want to be entrepreneurs, I'm always shocked when they say they have no ideas because I literally five or ten times a day uh, see something and it's like, why isn't anyone doing that? And uh, so to me, uh, every sort of business I've ever started, it's something that I wanted that wasn't being provided by the market. And I think there's so much of that out there. And especially as you travel, uh, you go to different uh, places and you can see that they're, they just don't have things that you've seen in other markets and you can so easily bring that to the market. So no, I've never done anything just for fun. I've, I've just always recognized a need and, and filled it because someone else wasn't doing it already. Now, if you could have given yourself a piece of knowledge or advice when you first started out, what would that be? That's a good question. Uh, I don't really think about those things too much. What kind of advice would I give to myself? I don't think I could get, really give myself any advice because I probably wouldn't have listened. Uh, and at the same time, most of the things I've learned, you can only learn by doing them. You can't learn them by someone telling you not to, or to do them. So if you went back to me when I was 23 or 24, if I could go back to myself, aside from saying, hey, buy uh, Google stock as soon as it comes available and all that right. sort of stuff. But as far as giving myself advice, first of all, I probably wouldn't have listened because I, I or if I did listen, I wouldn't have understood uh, what was being said because I wouldn't, I, I'd have no background in that. And I'd be like, okay, this strange guy from the future just told me something. I don't know what it really means. I'm going to have to find out for myself. I'll keep it in mind, but I won't really pay, you know. Calling your self a fascist <laughs> did you can you believe what this fascist told me man he doesn't get me <laughs> now I, I was i've always been open-minded and always listened to people but i the, the real point is that everything i've ever learned is not ever anything that anyone can really tell you it's something you have to just do and through trial and error figure out uh what the right way or the wrong way is to handle situations